You're getting worried, yes indeed. I know exactly what you need. A little sunshine will make you feel okay. Now look here, give the blues a chance. Find a sunny place. Go and paint your face. Sunshine. Okay. Calling the meeting to order at 737. Good. Okay, I sent out... Oh, boy. I, I may have sent it out from last May, but I sent out one document that had the meeting minutes from December 14th, from April 5th, and from April 26th um, all at once. So you wouldn't have to flip through them. And um, That's the first item for your consideration. I'll have videos and I think, yeah, the December one also had memos attached, which I recently used to make sure that uh, people in our department were getting paid the next fiscal year at the amounts that we agreed to. So have people looked at the minutes? Do people have any comments on the minutes? I mean, from the stuff, well, the things from what Pooh has been emailing, I think that in light of the minutes, I think what we're supposed to be looking over, right, is the position for the coordinator. That was part of the December minutes, yeah. Right, right, okay. And how that's going to be breaking, how your job will be broken down into maybe more than one part going forward, correct? Correct. Seems so long ago. But none of these minutes have been... Right, yeah, our, our primary thing right now is to approve the minutes, right? Yes. Okay. Or table them if people need more time to read them. Or So, are people prepared to approve the minutes, or do we want to table this for the next meeting? I was. I reviewed the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve minutes that were um, distributed uh, through the email to members of the commission. I'll second that. I've read them over it all as well. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks. Um, okay. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. Nope. Okay, passes unanimously. Okay, the reports. Um, we should have enough money. I, I have been transferring money bit by bit over to the line for other staff because um, the, moon, the minimum wage is up and uh, we have continued to do more meetings, but I think we're covered for the end of the year and we will still have something left in the capital account to carry over for next year, I'm pretty sure. Um, for activity, what can I say? Some, some boards go, go to in-person and others feel safer staying in, uh, staying virtual, or they go back to virtual. Uh, human resources, I think the, uh, the director of human resources uh, in the department had to be somewhere else, so they had another Zoom meeting. Um, we try to stay flexible. Let's see, last week uh, the police commission canceled their meeting for last night and at 5.30 the fire commission canceled their meeting for 6 o'clock. So, um, there, there, uh, I, do, I don't know what the problem is. I know that uh, uh, Economic Development Commission is always fighting to make a quorum. So uh, maybe there's just general fatigue all around. Uh, let's see, going forward, um, summertime, a lot of uh, 
commissions uh, take off either July or August. So that will lighten things up and maybe give me more time to search for more staff. Do you have questions? So I have actually a question for David as opposed to you, Sula. Um, in our previous meeting, if I recall properly, there was a discussion about the ordinances of how often a commission needs to meet, um, if I'm remembering properly. And I am wondering if this is a discussion that's been had with any of the other commissions and if there's any indication of what that might mean for future meetings, which is, you know, what that means for recordings we need to make. Right. Well, we have uh, <clears throat> one, one of the uh, discussions that the Board of Selectmen has had in a general, term, general uh, way has been that commissions are not required to meet every month. Uh, the ordinance requires at least six meetings a year in most cases. Some commissions are spelled out uh, for fewer than that. I believe the, I believe the, uh, you know, it, it, it may be our investment committee that is only required to meet quarterly or something like that. So there are some commissions that can meet just based on what is in the ordinance. And we've asked commissions in general to think about whether or not they are really needing to meet. Obviously, FUA's information would suggest that a lot of commissions are, are simply failing to meet because they don't, either they feel they don't meet, need to, or as she said, fatigue, whatever the reason. Uh, but as long as the commission meets six times a year, it's, it's meeting its, uh, the current ordinance requirements. Uh, we've asked commissions to think about that, see if we want new ordinances for commissions that wish to meet fewer times because they don't need uh, that many meetings. But we haven't really had a lot of uh, feedback on that. We haven't heard from commissions about uh, commissions wanting to meet fewer times. I think the more active commissions uh, are are clearly meeting monthly uh, because they they do a fair amount of work. Places like uh, uh, you know the library commission, I think uh, recreation seems to have something to talk about because they, particularly this time of year when they get into their summer programming. Uh, uh, you, you know, zoning, I mean, the, some of the commissions that have lots of work that comes in front of them clearly need to meet more often. But uh, it's the board's feeling that perhaps this, that we need do need to rethink this because it's costly in terms of the uh, television access, who is time, it's also costly in terms of a lot of the staff time because some of these commissions have require uh, staff members to do the minutes and uh, staff members, specific staff members who are assigned just to, uh, you know, work with the commission to give them the data that they need, the background stuff. And so I would, I would think that we haven't heard back any real response to that from the commissions, and perhaps it just hasn't been sent out in an organized enough way. Alden, uh, perhaps what we need is for the uh, first selectman to just let all of the chairs know that we think it would be 
an advantage to the town for us to get a, a handle on these on the numbers of meetings because it might save us some money and that would be a good thing okay yeah i think my sense is that at least for poor's work it would be useful to have a sense and for you know for the consideration of the commission of this commission to have a sense of if there's going to be some sort of reduction in the meetings which you know might well be a very good thing so you know just just for a planning purposes for this commission it would be useful to have that information from other commission chairs okay well i will take that to the board Okay. Um, under business, which I, uh, on the agenda, I just managed to file yesterday at night. Um, I, I wondered if you wanted to think about whether you, the present members still feel strongly about this remaining a commission. Um, I think it was two years ago, I gave you my reasons why um, a Department on Government Access should be um, clearly nonpartisan or bipartisan. And at the time, um, we, had, we had Matt, we had uh, uh, Toby, and it seemed clear that uh, remaining a commission was a good idea. So I thought maybe it would be worth asking current members if you still feel this way, or if moving the department on to uh, be put under the umbrella of general town administration, under Tony, for example, and Betsy, if that would be better and maybe have an advisory group of citizens to let us know uh, what programming uh, what programming you want or favor or st um, stuff like that. Do you want to think about that or? Uh... So I will share my thoughts since I'm interested in hearing Allison and Teresa's thoughts. Um, we've got a bunch of other stuff on the plate right now, particularly a, um, we expect within the next several months to replace our coordinator right or at least our coordinator is strongly encouraging that right um and i think at such a point it might make the most sense for us to remain a commission until a new coordinator is in place um and then at that point once the new coordinator is in place, is settled into the position, then, then it probably would make sense to reevaluate it. But I think the commission um, potentially serves a valuable role um, during this time as we search for a new coordinator. valid arguments to be made for it to fall under sort of the town's purview with an advisory committee that being said i think that there's so much of the inner workings of how this process is that would need to be able to be transferred over which would in fact be the new coordinator's position so i think that would be a discussion that could be had once we find a coordinator and they're trained and they're able to they have those sort of understandings um because to just dis, to not have the commission now there there would be no one to continue or understand the way that it works going forward if that makes sense i'll still be around in the background but my husband makes me move somewhere else. 
But if searching for a coordinator is sort of on the list of, you know, that's the the main focus and the main priority right now, I think that should be something that, I mean, that's something we should do um, as a commission. And then we going forward, have that discussion. And I think there's valid arguments on both sides, whether it stays a commission or goes um, under the town purview. I think that's a discussion that should be had. And I think it's an interesting discussion that we can have. But I think we should definitely fill the coordinator role before we go down that route. Teresa, do you have any comments? So, I mean, when before this was even a commission and it was, if you want to call it just a group of people or an ad hoc or whatever terminology, um, I was there. But I do not think that the ad hoc was what it is today and has um, wasn't to the level of growth and the responsibility of capturing basically town history that of what it does on a pretty daily basis in our commission um, commission meetings throughout the town. So I think this is a should be revisited maybe further down the line, but I, I think right now, especially during transition points, and also certain um, subjects coming up in the town, we have the country club, we have other things coming down the pike. It would still be important to have that bipartisan view of a commission to make sure that this commission in the transition period of that is going through is staying as bipartisan as possible. Yeah, I agree, Teresa. The next couple months, like up until the end of the, there are a lot of things that will be ha going on and happening, the meetings that are happening that, I do agree, at least in the short term, having as bipartisan of a group as we can to keep those recordings public and allowing people access to what's going on is, is important right now. But again, something that I do think we can revisit in the future. Okay. Do we need to have a vote on this? Would you like someone to make a motion? I can make a motion. Um, sure. I, um, I was mostly, I mostly wanted it out for discussion, but if you feel moved. Sure. Um, per our discussion, um, I make a motion that, um, to revisit in um, six business months um, the issue of, not issue, of the topic of the um, existence of the title of commission for GADVOC. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. okay. Oops. Got that one. Um, also, I put next because uh, this affects uh, Alden's uh, schedule particularly. He wanted to know if uh, if we could change meeting times and dates because of uh, class. Are you teaching or taking it in the future? Taking. I will. I expect to take a class starting in September that will meet every Tuesday evening from approximately 5 until 9. Okay, so what date and time works for you? I'm relatively flexible. Um, my thought is that pro Wednesday or Thursday, Actually, Monday, Wednesday, or Thursday, any of those would be okay for me. Um, I'll have to juggle things around no matter what. Um, but So any of those days, depending on what works for everyone else. Are we going to be right. keeping the format of WebEx or meeting in person? Because that changes it quite a bit. <laughs> I was just I was just gonna ask Patrick. I was gonna say I need to know if it's if I can call in on my laptop or if I'm going somewhere in person to pick the what day would be better. As of the end of last legislature, actually it, it was approved in uh, at the end of April. Uh, 
virtual meetings are now part of the freedom of information. So as long as we abide by the rules that we had before, the public has access by electronic means and uh, video recording is part of, uh, part of the town website. We, we can definitely keep this up forever. Um, as for when I have time, I, um, I'll tell you what, I, I will mail out days when we expect um, our priority town, um, boards and commissions to meet because there, there was talk about filling in first Thursday was open, but maybe conservation wanted to move there. And I think at their last meeting, they decided to stay with third Thursday. Um, second Thursday is reliably economic development. And hey, if we're, if we're virtual and uh, I have somebody else to cover some other meeting, that doesn't matter because I should be able to meet with you while somebody else is taking care of the other, um, whenever that may be. Wednesdays, first Wednesday, fourth Wednesday's open. Mondays are pretty busy. I think Mondays are, are, are occupied all the way through. And then, of course, when there are holidays, everything moves around. I could do Which, Wednesdays. But what did you say, the first Wednesday? First and fourth Wednesdays are at this point open. I could probably do, the, I'm thinking in July, because the second half of July into August, I'm in Greece. But generally speaking, Wednesdays are fine for me. So first or yeah. last would be fine. Can you take us with you? <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Can we visit? You're welcome to come. Mm. We haven't been to see our family since 2019, so it's been a long time since we've been out there. So it'll be wow. nice. Okay. Um, okay. So that's a. Uh, and whether we meet on, in July and August, that's another one too. Uh, we can take that up next. So Allison's good for Wednesdays. Uh, Teresa, no, you don't have recreation then, but. I'm usually driving back from Massachusetts, but I, as long as I can call in or do it virtually, I'll be fine. Okay. So I would like to suggest that we, um, going forward, move our meeting dates to the fourth Wednesdays to continue on as virtual meetings. I second that. Works for me. Seven thirty is still good for everybody, as long as we're moving things. Yeah. Okay. Teresa, is seven thirty the best time for you if you're driving? Yeah, no, it's fine. I sometimes leave a little later because of the traffic, and it's not worth the energy from okay. the part of Massachusetts I'm leaving from. So I don't okay. stay overnight because I'd rather be with the kids. So. Yeah. Okay. 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 And uh, from now until January, those will be special meetings posted. So if, if there's a topic that needs to come up, be sure to let me know before I forget to post the agenda. Before I post the agenda. Okay. And so that's I'd, I'd also say that, at least from my perspective, we don't have to change until September, so we could continue on through the summer, depending on what goes on with the summer with the Tuesday schedule. Okay. Well, the next item for you, I, I, I revisited because I was bringing it over from May. Um, I'm not sure what else to tell you about the cord, uh, the job descriptions. I should post something for, um, for staff. Um, what, uh, just, just for my clarification, Boo, uh, and Alden. So this is going to, your change is going to take place in September. Brett, it, it's not going to take place for the summer. It's going to take place in September. Is, the change to Wednesdays, is that right? right? That's okay. my understanding, yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I just want to be sure I knew what I was 
putting on my calendar. Thanks. Sure. Thanks, David. Um, I don't know if you want to skip job descriptions again. Coordinator, last time I heard from you, um, I think it was Mary said the administrative part of coordinating was the most important thing to fill first, but I'm also going to be, I'm, I'm going to look for somebody who can handle post-production. Um, so my, my concern is I think we need to nail this down right away because we should, we should get out a job posting. Yeah. We should do it as soon as possible because, you know, the job market is, it is hard to find people. Um, and it's going, it's even harder to find somebody, I imagine, who would be working sort of the way the job's been set up here. Um, and, you know, it will be very hard to find somebody that can replace you, Pua. Um, so we're going to, um, we need to make sure that we have a job description out there, um, posted and start looking for people as soon as possible. And also because that may end up giving us an opportunity for a little bit of overlap for you to be able to train the new coordinator. Okay. I'm also thinking about the tech, you know, not that I'm the greatest tech person there is, but somebody who understands the technology um, that will affect what kind of stuff you're going to, uh, by next time for the grant, which is the next item on the agenda. Um, do you still want to keep that all in one central person? So my, my thought is, you know, especially between Teresa and I, and I don't know uh, um, for others, but there's a fair amount of uh, knowledge and expertise available and there's, you know, always others around that we can tap into. My thought is that, and this kind of matches with any sort of organization, is that you want the person who is going to be the decision maker um, to end up having a, um, a working knowledge of the issues being discussed. They don't have to be the expert. So, you know, going back to the um, description that, that of the um, coordinator duties, the uh, um, understanding the issues of speaking with all chiefs, um, understanding it, the, you know, how the hypercaster can be re managed, re managed remotely, whether or not that's a regular part of the duty, they need at least that level of working knowledge. And I would say a level of working knowledge on post-production. We shouldn't be doing a lot of post-production because that's really not particularly our charter. We don't need somebody who's really sophisticated at, um, you know, the lower third and special types of thetans and uh, um, you know all kinds of stuff like that those are nice but and it would be good for the person to have a basic understanding of it but that doesn't have to be a requirement of the position okay again that's that's sort of my yeah. thoughts and if allison or teresa have stuff they want to add uh, on that detail, can I ask, I was moved by a comment from somebody viewing, maybe it was from Facebook, that uh, people wanted to know the agenda item when they tune in. This is when we had more people on TV than YouTube. They want to know what's being discussed when they come in. And uh, I think it was a comment from Mike Helfenbein, the older, that uh, yes, they should be using their lower thirds more. Um, so I've paid a lot of attention to that, but if we let it go and see if anybody comments again, is that an indication that we can simplify that? I think when we have a new coordinator, 
that coordinator should have the flexibility to try and find what's going to work best for their skill set, the skill set of the people they can get to work with it, and in terms of meeting the needs of the community. Okay. Personally, I love fancy lower thirds, and I would love to see the, you know, agenda item being discussed in the lower third with the appropriate names and titles and all of those sort of things. And yeah, throw in a logo to make it even more fancier. Um, but, you know, we, we're, our job is to communicate basic information. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me work on the whole description of that and uh, can pass it around. Uh, I'll, you know what? I'll take it by Betsy because um, she's the one who puts the job postings up and she, I'm sure she has. Also, though, has, the agendas and all the, you know, public documents, all of those are available online, right? If I'm not mistaken, you can, op aren't there links? To, you know, I know for the selectmen meetings, I can click on a link and I can see their agenda. Board of Ed before the meeting, you can see the agenda, you can see email sent. So, even, or do we post those links with the video? Because wouldn't that then allow somebody to follow along with the agenda if in the, in the meantime? Because again, I do, I would love a, a nice fancy lower third in the video. I think that would look great and that's all well and good, but I don't think that's necessary if the ask from that commenter was to be able to find the agenda and know what they were talking about. Right? Right. I do have links to the agendas that are posted yeah. on, the, on the town website. I, okay. I, I don't think YouTube difference. gives me information on, on who clicks on, on any of it, but, hmm. you know. I think the, the difference is that having the agenda available is one thing. If you tune in 20 minutes late, being able to oh, look to at the lower third and see and what see line yeah, of the agenda you're, you're on. Right. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, I do. That would, I do. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So that's the kind of detail we need from our citizens. <laughs> right. I think slowly too, more people are tuning into more stuff and then that'll be something. It's, it's, I mean, even if you look at the last, you know, referendum vote in town, more people are paying more attention so that, yep. that, may be a, that may be something that as we go forward, more people will be asking for. But I don't think that that's a requirement. I think it'd be, a, that's a nice to have and not something that means we're not doing our job efficiently. Right nice to have. I was very happy to see that the Amity, uh, the, la the June meeting for the Amity board was, uh, was very clear and audible <laughs> compared to the um, stumble they had in May. Uh, so I'll be nabbing some of that to put on on Mondays sometimes too. Um, Post-production, I might uh, put in for another uh, live production person because we still do have some virtual meetings and um, third Mondays it would be good to have an extra person to send out with a camera um, and maybe we can move them into other aspects of the work too. So th those are the two I'm going to be working on next. Um, July 15th is the due date for our grant application. Um, oh dear. And I think I sent, uh, I had sent the, uh, the salesman from, uh, from Telview. I think he's compelled to try and sell more. So he, uh, he suggested because I had heard about it from another, uh, from the Valley Shore TV people over in Westbrook that, uh, they were really interested in having a uh, and be having a Roku channel, as well as uh, 
as well as on demand online. I don't think they use YouTube. Most most of the other ones I know use some YouTube because it's easy and it's free and people think about it when they want to look for something. Um, but all I really wanted was uh, to change the unit we have for the next higher one. Uh, just for some particular uh, features that would make it easier for the next person. And I think the bottom line on that was in the neighborhood, oh, let's see, $10,599. Oh, except that we had to get another license for the Loudness Pro, which would make the audio more even, no matter uh, how high and low it goes in the recording. And there's a unit he calls info view, which is sort of an, an auxiliary thing that, uh, that some people use as a backup in case your main programming goes down. There's still uh, like a slideshow of information. What do they call it? The library has it, a screen that displays things that are going on. Right, a carousel type screen. That's it. That's okay. it. And uh, the unit itself was, looks like $1,700, and there was a license to go with that. Oh, that, does that zero out? Um, installation and training, nope, nope, that was another $500. So like, you know, $2,2100 for a thing that I don't think we need because we don't have one right now. Um, so, unless you're really burning to have a Roku or an Apple TV channel, which would cost extra licenses and probably some subscription on our part going forward, I would recommend just replacing the, uh, the Hypercaster unit for a Hypercaster all-in-one for our single channel. Um, so oh, I believe you can watch YouTube channels on both Roku and Apple TV. So I don't see an awful lot of value added of having a separate Roku channel or a separate Apple TV channel. So yeah, I like, I like the um, idea of upgrading to the um, all-in-one <coughs> hypercaster. Um, but not adding anything on for Roku or Apple TV. Okay. <laughs> yes, you can watch YouTube on both a Roku, a Fire TV, or an Apple TV. Yep. The, U the YouTube app and all YouTube channels are accessible on those devices. So I would so, agree that there's no benefit to having a separate channel for those smart TVs when YouTube is available and free to download on all of them. And I'll throw in that probably there's not enough money in the uh, cable advisory uh, grant pot to, uh, to cover everything that he wants to sell us. Um, nuts. I'm sorry, I should have come back with a figure for you to vote on, but I would say uh, you could approve a grant application to be filled out for an ask uh, not above not above twelve thousand. Anyway, you could say eleven thousand, and we would probably be covered. So, let me present a slightly different view, having served on data in terms of issuing the grant, and. Woodbridge has often been criticized for lowballing their grant application. <laughs> um, which, you know, is actually a good thing to do, right? We don't want to be asking for the moon when we don't need, need it. Um, but in terms of that, 
my inclination would be for you to approve um, or for us to authorize you to submit a grant application for what you consider the best equipment based on the feedback that we've given you. And I don't feel that we need to say um, for, you know, under 11,000 or under 12,000. Um, I think we can uh, um, trust your best um, effort on that. If people feel we should put a number on it, I would put the number maybe at 15,000 or something like that so that you have flexibility in case something comes up, which is a, oh, this would be a really good idea. Mm -hmm. um, so at least that's, that's my thought of it. Allison or Teresa? Yeah, I would, I would agree to that. I mean, it's a, first of all, it's a grant, and you know better than anybody what you need. So I feel comfortable not having to limit you, you know, no more than or no less than. Okay. Um, one one thing I've just re time. I just remembered that I hadn't thought about renewing the service contract for the TriCaster. Um, so I have to look into that too. <laughs> Haven't and needed service. And the other thing is, with a grant, um, especially in terms with data, um, if you ask for more than they can give you, you know, they're going to give you what they can give you. And they may even give some feedback saying, well, this is all we could really afford. And maybe this particular item isn't that important for you. So we should ask for what we think would be good. And if we have to adjust afterwards, we can adjust afterwards. Okay. Okay, I'll let you know what we put together and what I get Sony to sign off of. Um, but otherwise, you know, we'll get it in on time. Uh, and thank you. Thank you for your thoughts. Uh, anything comes up in the meantime before we meet again, uh, do let me know and uh, maybe we'll figure out how to squeeze it in. Uh, policies and procedures, still looking those over. Uh, I think that's all we need to say. So. I think at the last meeting we talked about our hope that um, John would be with us so we could discuss the policies and procedures. Um, I feel very comfortable holding off on a policies and procedures discussion until we have you know, more than the three of us here. So we have everyone. Okay. Then the last item I have for you tonight is next meeting. Um, can be in July, can be on the fourth Tuesday, even though there's probably a concert on the Green Bend. But it'll be virtual, so maybe somebody can be listening to the music at the same time. That will be July 26th? Yes, July 26th. My dad's right. birthday. And I will be in Greece, so I will not be here okay. for that one. Okay, we'll make a note. No, Allison. But we'll, we'll send you the link to the video later. Okay. Um, Perfect. <laughs> And they've got internet in Greece, right? We do have internet in Greece, but it's like seven, eight hours ahead. So when you guys are meeting at 7.30 at night, I will be asleep, I assure you. <laughs> yes, they do have internet in, in yeah. Greece. Okay. Well, okay. It's Let not the best internet it. you've ever seen, but it's there. We'll save contacting you for emergencies then. Okay. 
Uh, and if you think of anything we should be putting on the agenda, please do let me and Alden know. And if it turns out that we have to cancel in July and wait until August, I'm sure we'll be fine too. So this is where Mr. Chairman asks if there's any other meeting to. Okay. Oh so, no, except it's a special meeting. So. Okay. So in that case, I will um, ask if we've covered everything in the, our agenda, and if so, um, do we have a motion to adjourn? Um, I'll, yeah. I'll, yeah, I was going to say I'll <laughs> present the motion to adjourn. <laughs> Okay. So move. No, I didn't. I'm gonna go join it because it has no food or head. Was that Miss Kathy? Catherine, yes, Catherine. Sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well. To the okay. make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So let's. <laughs> okay. All, All right. in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, okay, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.